Hello, today I am in Arkansas, Fayetteville, Arkansas to be exact. I am with Double Jump Media and uh, there has been a slight change into my working relation with Double Jump Media. They have actually hired me on as a part-time uh, marketing manager, general guy, that's literally my title. And uh, they want me to edit uh, BTS videos of the gigs and film of the gigs and stuff like that. And I'll also be kind of be doing crew. So it's kind of a weird situation like during this gig because I was already uh, gonna be contracted as a sound person for this gig. But then um, I got hired at that point and then we kind of negotiated, not negotiated, but we kind of talked about um, the pay and I was like, this is fine. I, I lost my day rate, but then, you know, I kind of gained more of a, a more of a steady paycheck in a way uh, every week. So uh, it's fine with me. I like these guys. They like me and they kind of like the content I make here. That's actually why I got hired in that position because I have uh, been making these content on YouTube. I've been filming the BTS stuff and uh, he really likes it. He kind of I think he kind of thought that I can, you know, expand their business with it as well. And I'm pretty sure I can. So enough of that. Uh, we are at this Airbnb. And uh, as you can see here, I am actually running sound. Uh, there are some points where I run sound and then you won't get BTS for it. So you probably won't ever see me like running sound uh, with what the main camera I use, which is I've switched to the FX30. And at the end of the video, I'll explain to you why I've switched cameras to the FX30. But the whole time I'm just running boom. So there's nothing special on the sound side of things. I didn't run any lives the whole two days that we we're doing this. And my boom pole, the soldering joint, I think on the connectors of the boom pole uh, messed up. So luckily I had another coiled cable, which I wish it wasn't coiled, but uh, I was able to still run sound regardless. So that's good. The camera we're using is the Ari Amira. And we're also using the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro, but that's like on gimbal stuff. But this is Paul's personal camera. And basically every gear that we have is ours, except a few that Double Jump owns. And of course it's always Aperture. And uh, if you notice here, uh, the highlights are very overexposed. And um, I know how to expose the camera. <laughs> I use cameras obviously. But the FX30 is kind of strange. Uh, you, if you expose it correctly on the LCD, uh, it's actually a little more ex overexposed than you actually thought it was. And my brightness on my LCD is the is, is at middle ground. So um, it's kind of weird how it has turned out like this. Um, I really, really disliked it because there's a lot of clips that is pretty overblown. Um, not every clip, thank goodness. I recorded a lot of stuff. I recorded about two hours worth of stuff. So uh, it wasn't a huge deal because there was some that was, you know, nicely exposed. But as you can see, like, the darkness or the darker parts are kind of exposed a little more correctly. As kind of, and then, like, the highlights are, like, just really blown out, which it seems very strange to me how that's occurring. Uh, I wasn't shooting a log, I was shooting in just a regular profile and trying to capture everything, you know, the way it, it's supposed to look. So this dining room table here, we uh, we had a few setups here and uh, it's a pretty simple setup. We just kind of dolly in and then the kid looks at the camera and says something. And uh, at this point here, we needed everyone's help to kind of do what uh, our director wanted to do. Here is day two. We are currently at a, the park, and I think we were all mistold information. I don't know, but uh, we unloaded way too much gear, and I think we thought we were going to be there for a longer period of time. I didn't know we were going to move at all, and we actually moved like to three different locations after this. But yeah, we started the park here, and you can see I brought my cart and. I think he brought his cart and just we just loaded our entire like gear onto it. Obviously, no lights because it's outside, so we have no power. But then we just mainly use the the flag there and a bounce the whole time and all those stands and stuff like that. None of us used it for anything. We just held it and just did the job. It was overcast this entire morning, so it wasn't like a huge deal or anything like that. 
But yeah, the setup here is uh, the two kids are going to ride the bikes. Something's going to happen in the bike. And yeah, that's basically it. And the only sound that they need for here is uh, we kind of need the kid's reaction when he goes over the bridge, the little bridge. And that's it. Uh, most of the sound that was recorded for this project, uh, there wasn't a lot at all. Like, there was barely any. It's mostly voiceover, so we record the voiceover like at the end of the first day. So there's that as you can see here we set up the monitor on my cart but then you know ultimately we put on a monitor stand and the gimbal there we didn't reuse it so yeah like i said we kind of over prepared and um yeah we kind of cut into the time a little bit because of that um i kind of wish they kind of told us uh we had this much time this much you know gear we should only bring maybe you know stuff like that but then it's a pretty skeleton crew every time we do this stuff anyways it's usually just dp a gaffer maybe a grip um maybe sound and then uh zane there uh standing behind a dp he's the photographer which he just helps grips and gaff uh because you know he's got to wait for everything and takes pictures later where it's anyways so yeah that's usually how it is uh, if I'm not running sound, I'm usually just running grip or gaffing, so that's going to be how it goes now. I did tell um, the owner that I think someone should run sound if uh, they want me to re record the BTS um, for every project. Because it's kind of a hassle. It's a lot of work, and I got super tired the first day. But the second location here, we are at the swings, and uh, we're only here for maybe... 20 minutes before it started raining uh, so we had an early lunch and we came back to the swings and finished what we were supposed to film so yeah the early lunch kind of uh, it, it didn't suck but that's like maybe four hours into our call time after our call time so like it's kind of very early for us so yeah I would have preferred if we just kind of waited but then you know if you're waiting, you might as well do something. So we just had lunch. So, but thank goodness it stopped raining afterwards. Uh, literally right after we finished eating, which was probably about 30, 40 minutes, maybe um, we came back and it wasn't raining and the sun was actually coming back up. Here we go again. You can see the overexposure I was talking about on the camera. If you own an FX30 or maybe FX3, I don't know, or if this is just Sony, I'm not sure. Um, and if you know why this is happening, then let me know. Um, I've After this, I started to underexpose a little bit just so I can get the proper exposure. But, you know, sometimes if I do that, I actually underexpose too. So I have to kind of have to choose my battles, I guess. So Paul was kind of having some trouble with the gimbal and um, it was kind of eating up on our time. So I actually uh, stopped recording to BTS for a little bit because we're all waiting and I helped him out. Um, we both kind of hate gimbals so <laughs> it kind of like helped that we 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 had the same gear he has rs3 pro i have one as well so i just kind of helped him out and we just found out the things the issue was that the horizon line was like not correct at all and uh, we didn't know why we kept resetting it balancing it but then we just had to manually put in the horizon ourselves so that's what that was like that was it so that's what happened here we kind of moved down a little bit from the swings, just, you know, down the parking lot. And we just kind of filmed right here real quick. And that's it. As you can see, it's like, I actually kind of over intentionally overexposed um, everyone outside the shade area because I was kind of capturing the camera stuff there. But then our next location is the food truck area next to the park where we first at. And I discovered that there's a home food truck here, which is pretty cool. But they were closed. They were on vacation, and I couldn't get to talk to them, which kind of sucked. But, um, yeah. That would be cool if, like, they were open and we used them into the, the shot here, which would be pretty cool. But we used the one right next to them. I think it's a Mexican uh, food truck here. Right here, this is the fine example of the overexposure of the camera. Uh, I have no idea what was happening. I swear, you know, I exposed properly. Obviously the shade is exposed pretty good, uh, but then the sunny bits, it's just overexposed and the highlights are clipping. So I can't recover that because I'm not shooting log. So um, just been some contemplation if, if I should shoot log or not, but then 
I was going to shoot log on the next gig, which I can't show to you guys until later on. But then I was also like, I changed my ISO for exposure most of the time. And uh, if I shoot log, it's going to get really noisy. And I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to. <laughs> I'd rather have a little bit overexposed because it's just BTS. It's nothing that is uh, important, that's super crazy, that needs to be, it should be really good. So I was like, we'll just do it. And I'll just expose a little bit you know, under, like maybe 0 0.3, 0 0.7, I don't know. This was a pretty simple scene. Uh, the food gets handed to him. Uh, there's no more sound for the rest of the day. Uh, the rest of the day is basically over for me. I could have just gone home, but then, um, like I said, I work for Double Jump Media now, so I'm gonna be capturing all the BTS. So that girl in the center there that's um, giving the plate to our actor, um, <laughs> She has this resting, angry face, and we make jokes about it all the time. And uh, afterwards, you're going to see that she decided to smile every time I was pointing the camera towards that direction. So she's just, like, deliberately smiling, like, ah. It's super funny. Yeah, we, we get along very well. But, yeah, uh, after this, we just went back to the park and finished up the day. So I want to show you guys the camera I was using for the BTS. Um, I decided to use my FX30 and I bought the 17 to 70 lens for it uh, because originally I was using my EOS R with my 24 to 105 and it's great, you know, it's full frame. I get wide with 24 and get kind of tight with 105 and I kind of wanted the same thing for the FX30. Now you're saying, you're probably thinking, why don't you just keep the EOS R, right? which I can, which is great, you know, it works perfectly fine. But then I was um, I was editing the BTS and I was trying to match footage together, the BTS footage and the actual camera on set. And I was finding it to be very, very difficult for some reason. I was unable, I was unable to actually sync it and I find the correct ones. So my idea was, <clears throat> this is kind of stupid, but it's kind of smart too. <laughs> I'll run time code, right? Since the FX30, you can run time code through the cable here, through metadata. And then I can also run an audio, like my microphone here, if you want to use the audio on like the BTS set. So, and I run time code to the camera there. And since I'm running sound, I can run time code there as well. So it makes everything kind of simple. So that's the idea. It's a little bit of a setup, you know, cause I have to like make sure the DP that we're using, the camera they're using, um, can run time code, and if they're cool, we run a time code, which i am basically been working with the same DPs this entire time, so um, they're like obviously cool with that, and they kind of want time code instead, you know? I don't know. They're not editing it, but time code's cool. So if I use the EOS R, the time code go through audio, which uh, that creates the, not the metadata, you know, it's just the, the audio time code and um, the sound. And you have to convert it and stuff and i can't really use the mic anymore you know um, even though it does it will capture audio uh through the time code microphone or the technical things microphone um it's it's not like going to be the cleanest audio like it's just, it's omnidirectional compared to this is more directional microphone so that's the reason why i switched to the fx30 for the bts it's kind of a weird switch uh but i also thought i was like I bought this camera for, you know, really no reason, and I haven't really been using it. It's just been like my my C camera for weddings. I put 7200 on it, and then that's it. That's, I don't use it for anything else. And um, the reason why I, I kind of got it was because of time code. But then because it's crop sensor, it kind of limited me. I don't have so many lenses. I only have an adapter I use with it, so... Yeah, I decided to get the 70 to uh, 70 because it's kind of a, it's close to a 24 to a 105 equivalent, which is, you know, good enough. And 17 is pretty wide. It's pretty close to 24 in full frame, but, you know, it's not quite, it's a little, it's a little higher, but that's better than like an actual 24 on this camera. So that's the reason why I have this set up and it's kind of weird. It kind of looks weird. It kind of makes a little sense, but it works. <laughs>